Now, if we were looking at an unregulated market, then we know that the consumer surplus is going to be the area under the demand curve up to the equilibrium quantity and above the equilibrium price. The producer surplus will be the area under the equilibrium price up to the equilibrium quantity sold and above the supply curve. We can see here that the when we add up the consumer plus the producer surplus, the total economic welfare area is as large as it can be, caterus paribus, that is assuming the curves don't move. There's no dead weight loss of economic welfare here. But what if we impose our price ceiling? In that case, we are going to create a dead weight loss because the quantity bought and sold will be less than the equilibrium and so this part of the consumer plus the producer surplus will be lost. So we know that we're not allocating our, our, our resources efficiently and we know that there's less economic welfare being generated in total. However, that doesn't mean that both parties will be dissatisfied with this outcome. We know in the case of the producers, that is the landlords, that assuming the um, price ceiling is strictly imposed by the government, their, consumer, their producer surplus area will have been restricted. It used to be a large uh, quasi-triangle here, but now it's going to be the area under the price ceiling or the rent ceiling up to the smaller quantities offered for sale and above the supply curve. What about the consumer surplus on the other hand however? Well the consumer surplus is going to be the area under the demand curve up to the quantity offered for sale and above the enforced price ceiling. So we can see the landlords unambiguously lose out of an enforced price ceiling. The question is, do the consumers gain overall? Well, in order to find that out, we need to compare it to equilibrium. So in the equilibrium condition, we can see that there was this part of consumer surplus that existed but due to the price ceiling that part of economic welfare that part of the consumer surplus has been lost and it turns out that's about $37.50 but they also gained consumer surplus by transferring some of the producer surplus to themselves due to the lower price that area there has been transferred from consumers, sorry, from producers to the consumers. And that turns out to be $450. So we can clearly see, and you can just eyeball test it and see anyway, that the amount of consumer sur surplus lost due to deadweight loss, the restriction in output, is less than the amount of consumer surplus they gained by transferring some of the producer surplus to themselves. In that case, overall, we would say that although the producers, that is the landlords, lose, in this example, the renters actually win from this policy. It actually benefits them in economic welfare terms. What if, however, the rent ceiling were not enforced strictly by the government? That is, they put it down on paper, but then they don't put the money into enforcing the law and making sure that everyone is selling at at least the uh, rent ceiling of $400. What if a secret black market can emerge in which buyers are able to bid the price up secretly to the highest price they're willing to pay. And of course, the, set, the producers, the landlords, are more than willing to accept the highest price that the consumers are willing to pay. 
What is that highest price? Well, we know at the restricted quantity of 3,000 that the highest price given by the demand curve, the highest price is $625. That's the highest price the uh, renters are willing to pay. And if they can secretly do that, then we could say that the price in the black market will be bid up to that highest price in which case that will be the real secret black market price, not the rent ceiling. The rent ceiling becomes irrelevant in terms of price anyway. So in this example, we can see that the renters, the buyers, unambiguously lose. Their consumer surplus is now the area under the demand curve up to the quantity bought and sold of 3,000 and above the new high black market price. What about the landlords? Do they win? Well, potentially they do, but we need to check. So we compare to equilibrium. We can see that a deadweight loss has been created. We knew that already. But the part of the deadweight loss that was producer surplus was this area here. That has been lost to the landlords. However, they have gained some of the consumer surplus. Some of the consumer surplus has been transferred to them due to the black market, this area here. Now, an eyeball test is not so clear in this case. Is the amount of producer surplus gained greater than the amount of producer surplus lost? Well, when we do the calculations, it turns out to be pretty clear. The amount gained in this example by the producers, the landlords, is greater than the amount they lost. So overall, if a price signal is imposed but is not enforced, in this example, the landlords actually win out of the creation of a black market.